Today we go to the Tennessee-North Carolina border to tell you the story of two men who love the high peaks between the states so much that they are forever enshrined in the names for two of the tallest of them. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilly, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories, A History of Appalachia. Steve, this sounds interesting too, because in every case, we, we really don't know a lot of history behind some of the mountains, at least in Appalachia. And this gives us a little bit of a background about a couple of the mountains that, you know, we hear about every day, but, you know, I guess we kind of take it for granted where they came from. Well, this is a very fascinating story. I mean, you're right. A lot of the mountains, we don't know where the names came from, but in the case of some of these mountains and what they call the Black Mountains of North Carolina, uh, and by the way, Rod, they're named for this dark spruce fir forest that covers the tops of them. You know, that happens to be, incidentally, a remnant of the Ice Age that survived due to the height of these peaks. They're actually the tallest mountains in eastern North America. Anyway, wow. one mountain stood out, and I'm going to try to say this right. It's called Gvanagiai to the native Cherokee. Now, later, Spanish explorers and adventurers entered the region and were the first to see the Black Mountains in the mid-1500s. Later on, British settlers and long hunters began moving into the region, and it was these folks who renamed Gvanagiai as the Black Dome. Well, at that time in the late 1700s, it was commonly thought that the highest mountain along the North Carolina-Tennessee border was Grandfather Mountain, having been suggested by a French botanist named André Michaud in the 1790s. You see, Michaud had been traveling the area in search of valuable plants for the French government and as a part of an effort to gather knowledge about nature throughout the world. Several of the plants he discovered here were shipped back to France, along with 90 other cases of plants and seeds. He also introduced many species of plants to America at the same time, including the crip myrtle. Well, this is where a professor of math, natural philosophy, and geology came into the picture. Elisha Mitchell, born on August 19, 1793 in Washington, Connecticut, just happened to be teaching at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill starting in 1818. Dr. Mitchell was an educator, geologist, and a Presbyterian minister to boot who graduated from Yale in 1813. Now, in addition to his teaching duties, Dr. Mitchell was also the university's bursar, accountant, and acting president from time to time. A uh, busy man indeed, wouldn't you say, Rod? Yes, he was. He's a very busy man because I guess back in those days you had limited amount of people to be able to do all those duties. So mm -hmm. I assume that he took on those jobs to be able to do that to, in order for the university to get by. But Dr. Mitchell disagreed with Michaud's opinion about Grandfather Mountain. In 1828, he had led an expedition into the Black Mountains and came away convinced that both the Black Dome and Roan Mountain were higher than Grandfather Mountain, and he was determined to prove it. He climbed those mountains in 1838 and 1844, taking air pressure measurements by barometer, with which he proved that Black Dome was higher than not only Grandfather Mountain, but also Roan Mountain, and was even higher than Mount Washington in New Hampshire, which made it the highest peak east of the Mississippi River. And with that, you'd think the matter was settled, but as you'll see, You'd be wrong, right, Steve? That is right. And that takes us to another well-known person in Western North Carolina, a fellow by the name of Thomas Klingman. Now, Klingman was born in Huntsville in Yadkin County, North Carolina. He attended college at UNC Chapel Hill, then practiced law, and eventually became a representative from North Carolina in the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, when he attended UNC, Klingman studied under Dr. Mitchell. Now, Klingman also fancied himself an amateur geologist and a pretty good one to boot, and he had his own ideas about which mountain was the tallest. The Smoky Dome, located on the North Carolina-Tennessee state line, was Klingman's choice. Now, Smoky Dome wasn't the original Cherokee name for the peak. The Native Americans called it Kuwahi, which meant the Mulberry Place. Uh, the mountain was the home of the white bear, the great chief of all bears, according to Cherokee tradition. 
It was the European settlers who later changed the name to Smoky Dome due to the, just like the Smoky Mountains, all the mist and, and all that that you saw as you looked toward it. Well, Klingman too loved the Black Mountains, and he spent the 1850s exploring the area that included Grandfather Mountain, Roan Mountain, Black Dome, and Smoky Dome. And he vehemently disagreed with Dr. Mitchell about which mountain was the tallest, and he wasn't afraid to take his argument public, was he, Rod? No, he wasn't. Thomas Klingman had left his law practice and went into politics. By the 1850s, he was a congressman from western North Carolina based in Asheville, and he loved a challenge. In 1845, Klingman got into a dispute with a fellow congressman by the name of William Lowndes Yancey of Alabama over a speech Yancey had made on the House floor about Klingman. That dispute led to a duel between the two men in which they both missed each other. After doing his own exploring and also after reading all the reports issued by Elijah Mitchell over the previous three decades, Klingman decided Mitchell was mistaken in his belief that Black Dome was the highest mountain in the East. It was his contention that Smoky Dome was the taller peak. Klingman climbed that Smoky Dome and performed his own calculations and, to nobody's surprise, announced that that mountain was higher than Black Dome. Well, at that, Mitchell challenged Klingman's claims, and the two began a fiery debate, followed by the press, which ended in Mitchell deciding to settle the dispute once and for all by taking a new measurement of the Black Dome, which he undertook in 1857. Well, on June 27th of that year, while hiking to the top, he passed Mitchell's Falls, a 40-foot waterfall on the mountain, there, he fell from a cliff above the falls, plummeting 40 feet into the water beneath the falls. Ironically, Rod, he survived the fall, but was knocked unconscious and drowned in that pool of water. And in honor of his work, the Black Dome was renamed Mount Mitchell in 1858. Well, Dr. Mitchell was buried in Asheville, but a year later was disinterred and reburied atop the mountain that bears his name. In 1882, the U.S. Geological Survey upheld Mitchell's measurements and named the peak the highest one east of the Mississippi at 6,684 feet above sea level. And Thomas Klingman? Well, when the Civil War broke out, he was one of 10 Southern senators who refused to resign after their states seceded, leading the Senate to expel all 10 in absentia. After that, he enlisted in the Confederate Army and served as a brigadier general leading the 25th North Carolina Infantry in fighting at Cold Harbor, Petersburg, and many other significant battles. And after the war, Klingman returned to the mountains he loved, exploring and measuring them. He continued to maintain that Smoky Dome was the highest mountain east of the Mississippi, and in his honor, Smoky Dome was also renamed to Klingman's Dome, one of the prime visitor attractions in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park today. Thomas Klingman died on November 3, 1897, in Morganton, North Carolina, and is buried in the Riverside Cemetery in Asheville. And that's the story of how two of the tallest Appalachian Mountains got their names. Another bit of the history of this place we call home. Thanks for watching. If you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We also have an audio podcast that you can find on your favorite podcast app. Again, thanks for watching. Till next we meet. So long, everybody.